Hello and welcome to Palestine Studies TV. I'm Omar Badar, and today we're going to be speaking about the tragic situation in the Yarmouk camp in Syria. And we'll be speaking with Nidal Bitari. He is a board member of the Palestinian Center for Human Rights in Syria and a, and a widely published author. He's also lived in Syria until recently. He left in December of 2011, but he remains in regular contact with people inside the Yarmouk camp. Nidal, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for the interview. Um, before we talk about what the current situation is like there, uh, why don't you give us a little bit of background about what the Yarmouk camp actually is? Okay, the Yarmouk camp is one of the biggest uh, camps for uh, Syrian Palestinian refugees in Syria, and uh, it's in Damascus, in south, south of Damascus. Uh, about 150,000 uh, Syrian Palestinian refugees used to live in this camp before the conflict. Uh, and, with, and the camp, the population in the camp is like one million uh, uh, person live there. Mm -hmm. So you can see that uh, the Palestinians in, this, in the camp is minority yeah. now. And uh, until uh, December 2012, about 150,000 lived in the camp. But when the, the conflict started and the, uh, the, uh, actually after the, the air attack, because the, the Syrian regime attacked uh, the, the camp, by air and uh, by air force, so people started to 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 leave the, uh, the camp, and here where uh, the situation started to uh, to to escalate to escalate inside the, uh, inside the camp. So we had about one hundred fifty thousand after the bombings, and a lot of people left. What are we looking at as uh, camp population right now? Now about uh, about fifty thousand uh, thousand are living in the inside the camp. About uh, twenty thousand. Palestinians and the, other, the rest are, are Syrians. Mm -hmm. uh, today maybe is uh, the day 200 of uh, the siege on the camp. 200th yeah, day? Yeah, yep. 200 day. So the siege, let's talk first about the humanitarian situation right now <coughs> and then we'll go back and talk about the reasons for it. Uh, what is what is life like inside the camp right now? Uh, actually the, because of the siege of the, uh, on the camp uh, people uh, are not allowed at all to 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 leave to go or in uh, or in the camp to go out or in the camp. So uh, and also the the, the Syrian regime and uh, the uh, and some of Palestinian factions, which is in force in in, the, in this uh, in this siege, are preventing uh, relief and medical assistance to to, to enter the camp. So uh, this this and it's uh, since uh, about six months. So now we are living a starvation inside the camp. People really are starved to death. About to, uh, until yesterday, about eight, five, uh, eighty-five uh, persons have been uh, have killed, died from actually starvation. died of starving. Yeah. Yes. So m many of them are children and uh, and old men and women, and uh, some of these uh, old men who uh, those died actually they were born in Palestine. Before, uh, before a Nakba, and and they died uh, in in the, yeah. in the camp. Essentially, the, yeah. their entire lives they basically exactly. lived in, in a refugee camp, yeah. and that's how it ended for exactly. them. I know so, we've seen a lot of images that have come out on YouTube, you know, of people who you could tell like have not eaten in a long time. Like you could see the physical uh, manifestation of, of what that looks like. Why did that happen? Why is the camp under siege? Uh, Let's go back a little bit before the, the, the uh, to 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 the starting of the the, the conflict in Syria. Actually, the, the, all the Palestinians try try to be neutral in this conflict because you know that Palestinians have the, in their memory the, the the experiences in Lebanon and in Jordan and then in Libya and uh, and Iraq. So so you can say that in every ten years that we we have another. Uh, conflict uh, regarding Palestinian refugees around the world. Mm -hmm. So, so because of this experience, Palestinians really start, uh, try to be neutral and not to involve themselves in, in these conflicts, especially in the armed conflict, uh, conflict in Syria. But what happened that uh, that the neighbor uh, neighboring uh, the neighborhood of the camp, like uh, areas like <coughs> in rural Damascus, Hajar Aswad, Adam, and the Bira. <coughs> It was hot spots area, areas. So people started to flee from these areas to uh, to, uh, to the camp, which was a very safe area for the for for displacement people. And uh, about uh, and one day the, uh, the 
the camp really host like about uh, 70,000 uh, uh, persons from these areas. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, you know, the, the, the Palestinian street, street already in, inside in, in Syria was uh, divided as, as much as uh, the, the Syrian street divided. Mm -hmm. Some of them pro the regime and others anti the regime. And also, and this is the worst, the Palestinian factions in Syria uh, took attitudes like very hard attitudes to, toward this conflict. Mm -hmm. So some of them were pro regime and like uh, Popular Front uh, General Command, which really started to uh, to involve in military actions with the regime and to fight the Free Syrian Army in uh, never in uh, never in the camp. So this thing made a very uh, hard and strong tension between the, 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 the Free Syrian Army in neighboring areas and, and General Command, so mm -hmm. that the Free Syrian Army decided to, uh, to, to enter the camp, to, to stop and, or kick out uh, the, uh, the General Command. Yeah. And, and the factor in that, uh, in that time, the, the Free Syrian Army were talking about zero hour. So to, to enter uh, to enter Damascus. So they said that uh, that Al Yarmouk camp is our gate to uh, to to the center of Damascus. So there was there uh, there were two two reasons. One of them the, the Palestinian factions, and especially Al Saika Al Fath Al Intifada and uh, and General Commander Qiyad Al Amin, and uh, and psychologically Palestinians, you know that. They they were very sympathetic with with the, with the revolution, honestly, mm -hmm. but they don't want to 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 really involve in yeah, the situation. To get themselves in the middle and of going it. back a little bit to to uh, to uh, two thousand eleven, when the demonstration return demonstrations to toward uh, Jolan had been uh, to the borders mm -hmm. between uh, occupied Jolan and and Syria. Um, there was a very uh, question mark on this uh, return demonstration because we we lived in uh, in, in Syria since uh, Nakba 1948, and so why now the regime opened these borders? So it was never us? allowed to demonstrate up until N not the only demonstrate. Happened. We were not allowed to go to to these borders. We yep. need really a permission from the se the security forces to 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 reach these uh, these areas. Yep. So, so when this demonstration had been about about thirty, uh, especially the second one in uh, in, um, in June yeah. two thousand eleven, about thirty uh, uh, thirty three uh, Palestinians uh, youth were killed in uh, by uh, the Israeli, Israeli fire, army, right? yeah. yep. and uh, this made the Palestinians really angry about this demonstration, which really was. Almost an attempt at maybe distraction from what's actually happening in Syria. It's an yeah. To so a so ne yeah, after the next day after this uh, this event, uh, one of uh, the the Syrian president's uh, relatives said on uh, public that we are warning Israel that any time we can move the conflict from inside Syria to the, to to the uh, yeah. So so we feel we felt like we are. The, the Syrian regime is planning to planning to to use us. Yeah, yeah. like this Palestinians conflict. were sacrificed e exactly. for the sake of making a political e exactly, statement, in a sense. Exactly. So, so all these factors were uh, gathered together uh, after uh, the the air attack and uh, and and uh, and went and make that make uh, make mm -hmm. the, the the camp go through this, uh, so this conflict. I know um, UNRWA. Uh, recently described the situation as dire, deteriorating, and shocking. Uh, are the Palestinians, in a sense, you know, when you talk about the conflict between the regime and the Syrian and the Free Syrian Army, um, are Palestinians a target of this current campaign of starvation, or are they simply just bystanders who happen to be victimized by a regime that does not care about them and is going after isolating that armed uprising? Well. Um well, if you if you want to to say that Palestinians are targeted by by this starvation, maybe it's right, and um, but there are other reasons, but like uh, keeps this siege uh, continue. Like <coughs> uh, <coughs> Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas sent to to Damascus like five missions mm -hmm. to to negotiate with the regime and to free Syrian army inside the camp. 
and in the five missions, every time they reached, uh, re uh, they could reach a, an agreement, but it was not able to to be yeah, an no implementation form. Yeah. yeah. So one of these reasons was because the Free Senior Army sometimes refused to uh, to to withdraw from the camp, mm -hmm. and other times uh, the the Popular Front uh, General Command refused to, uh, to 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 implement this. And of course, uh, just so people who are watching know, that's separate from the PFLP. It's not the same organization. It's a split off. Essentially, the General Command is a, is a separate uh, organization. Yeah, the command is, yeah. is different. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, so this factor was very, uh, uh, very important in, uh, in not solving the situation, mm -hmm. the, the conflict inside, uh, inside the camp. On the other hand, we feel that we are not targeted because just we, we are Palestinians. Mm -hmm. but there are some, some news come out by Abbas Zaki mm -hmm. that. Uh, on websites, they said that Abbas Zaki in his uh, meeting with Bashar al-Assad, he said, "If you, I, uh, if you help us in solving the the Palestinian refugee situation or the, the Palestinian refugee case in Syria by finding a, a final solution for them, we will uh, we will support you to to stay in, uh, in power." In yeah. power. So, so we are not sure about this, this, uh, this news. But uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, President Mahmoud Abbas, denied this. Yep. And, uh, anyways, the Palestinian refugee case is pending on uh, the negotiations between Palestine, uh, PLO, and uh, and Israel. Yep. So, so this the, uh, the the current situation of Palestinian refugees will not end until we really find a final solution and a permanent status for uh, for Palestinian refugees. Maybe, maybe, if if Palestinian refugees in Syria were uh, uh, given a asylum to to another to another uh, or settled in a, in a third, third country, country. Yep. maybe this will help the, the negotiation but it's not uh, but it's not uh, a solution actually right. because it's it will cancel the the, the right to return mm -hmm. and this is what happened when president mahmoud abbas sent a message to uh, uh, a request to uh, to mr ban ki uh, asking him to uh, to uh, to ask israeli uh, government to allow palestinian uh, syrian palestinian from uh, from uh, Al Yarmouk camp to, to enter to West Bank, yeah. to, uh, to enter West Bank, mm -hmm. Netanyahu approved that, but he said in condition to cancel their yeah. attack. They don't want them to return to Israel. They're yeah, happy exactly. to just have them go to the exactly. West Bank. Exactly. Exactly. From there. So, so, so you th 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 this thing is a political now. Now the Palestinian crisis is in addition to that uh, very uh, bad uh, humanitarian situation inside the camp. It's a political issue now. Yeah. And talking to uh, uh, on a humanitarian issue, I want to mention and to highlight something is very important that well, that uh, people Syrian Palestinian people are not allowed to enter any country neighboring. neighboring. Uh, so uh, Jordan uh, refused to receive any Syrian Palestinian refugee, and uh, and now and recently Lebanon closed the, the borders on front. Of, uh, in face of uh, Syrian So they're trapped in every sense. They're besieged exactly. within the camp, and then beyond that, even if they escape, there's really nowhere to exactly. go. Exactly. So they they uh, they now uh, spread over all uh, Damascus uh, and, and their relatives, or in gardens sometimes, in public, or or uh, renting houses. So there were multiple attempts to bring food into the camp. Um, it's not clear. Has food ever been delivered adequately at any point? Uh, three days or four days ago, there was a convoy uh, uh, tried to to enter the camp, uh, but uh, they uh, they uh, only could uh, enter uh, two hundred items of food to the camp, and uh, seventy five of them have been distributed to uh, to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, today there is maybe today there is a trial to to enter five hundred uh, other five hundred uh, yeah boxes or whatever of food boxes, essentially yeah, baskets. Yep. Yeah, but that's grossly insufficient when you talk about the numbers of the people in the oh, camp. Of course, it's not sufficient because according to the Palestinian uh, civil society organizations inside the camp, there are about three or four organizations working on relief. Uh, that the registered family are uh, families are uh, about uh, seven thousand uh, families. Yep. So you know, it's really not sufficient. Um, 
are there any signs of hope or optimism about moving forward? Is there anything in the works that could that could be positive here? Uh, now we are talking about uh, the third uh, trial of uh, to, of uh, uh, agreeing on a, tr a truce between uh, the, the, the Christian army and, and the regime. And uh, but honestly, nothing is looming now. Uh, so the situation is going is go uh, is getting worse inside yep. the camp and. Um, Especially in the, in the last months, because every uh, the the people uh, they uh, there was one hospital in, in uh, inside the camp is working now, and there is no medical and uh, equipment, no supplies no or any of that stuff yeah. at all, and uh, and people uh, and uh, number and some diseases started to uh, to spread inside the camp, mm -hmm. especially uh, especially on the, the children. No, it's it's really tragic, and I know a lot of people actually care very deeply about this and wish they could do something. Uh, what would you say to people? Is there what ways can people get involved and try to help the situation? Okay, I'm going to talk about on, on two levels. The first one, and it's really important to be highlighted that all the refugees in this world have the right to to, pro, to, pro, to be protected. So all of them are under the pro, the responsibility of UNHCR. All the Palestinians have their own uh, has their own. Uh, uh, agency yeah. onorwa so and onorwa uh, its mission uh, is uh, in, uh, its mission includes uh, relief and and war but but not uh, protection so so when we are talking about uh, such uh, crisis uh, in syria and people fleeing from syria to uh, 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 especially palestinians palestinians are going uh, went to lebanon and some of them in uh, in Jordan and uh, in uh, in Egypt, mm -hmm. so but they are not under the protection of uh, of UNRWA because it doesn't have uh, this in the in its yeah. mission. So we really need to to press uh, to to make any uh, pressure on uh, UN by uh, by uh, civil society organization, especially Palestinian civil society organization in West Bank and Gaza and uh, and around the world, on on to 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 uh, to add this mission to uh, to UNRWA. Mm -hmm. Another thing. Uh, we, we, we could we, we should continue our campaigns on uh, on earlier move camp about to 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 make to uh, to let the, the world know what is going uh, on there so we are we are now we prepared actually Palestinian actors prepared many campaigns like uh, uh, to uh, online campaigns and uh, and we spoke a lot on media about uh, the situation inside the camp but until now we couldn't uh, achieve anything of uh, these campaigns but really uh, I ask people to uh, especially the civil society organizations and the human rights organ uh, rights organizations to keep uh, uh, pushing the the earlier move camp uh, case uh, on uh, in, uh, in in the international community um, maybe this is the most important thing now actually and uh, uh, like three or four days ago, people inside the camp, because of the hard situation, because uh, the uh, no food, because no medical assistance, really signed a, a paper or a, a request to uh, that a massive request to uh, to to have a political asylum any anywhere in this war, and maybe this is the first time that Palestinians ask for massive things like like, yeah. like this because you know they are we are. <coughs> all fighting for our right to return to Palestine. So now we are refugees asking for a refuge. Asking, yeah. yeah. It's it's a very very tragic situation. I know it's very difficult, and it's something that people should be paying a lot more attention to. Idal, thank you so much for being today with us. Thank you, Omar. Thank you so thank much. You. Appreciate it. You can learn more about the situation in your MOOC by reading an upcoming article by Nidal Bitari in the coming issue of the Journal for Palestine Studies, and you can find that by visiting our website palestine-studies.org. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.